Race number five at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 2.54. It is the main event, the Scenic Blast Stakes, over 1,200 metres in replay. Let's go back to the Miss Andretti Stakes and the win of Valor Road. From Super Maxi, Pike looking for an inside run with Valero, but there's not a lot of room to get through. He's got involved in a real tussle. Don't fuss on the outside. Belt is the leader. Now Valero peels off his heels down the outside. Don't fuss as Pike reaches the lead on the favourite Valero. It's been a big win, and Valero went home to beat. Valero returned to winning ways in the Miss Andretti Stakes a couple of weeks ago. He certainly gave the impression he's going to be more impressive over 100 metres further. He was sensational, it has to be said. He exploded when the gap appeared finally for William Pike and uh, he was good value for more than the margin of 1.1 lengths. Goes on top here from number six, Don't Fuss. Really struggled to separate Don't Fuss and Belter uh, in this race, but ended up going with Don't Fuss for the Mines. I just think the extra 100 metres should suit Don't Fuss a little bit more than Belter, and Belter, as we know, will be on speed. Number two is Belter. He's run two absolutely cracking races in finishing second behind Fabergino and then behind Valor Road in the Miss Andretti Stakes. He's just a little bit of a sitting duck, but he'll be there or thereabouts for a long, long, long way. He's just gonna probably have a little bit of a, um, company on the speed with Baraki Beats and Wrinkley also engaged. And then number five, the most interesting runner in the race is definitely Cup Knight, has won two trials ahead of his reappearance, but he's facing a genuine top class sprinter here in uh, Valor Road. He's definitely Group 2 quality, maybe even low end of Group 1. I'm not really sure if Cup Knight can beat him over the 1200 metres first up. Top selection in race number five is number one, Valor Road, to beat six Don't Fuss, two Belter, and five Cup Knight. Race number six at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 3.30. It's the Jason Oliver Memorial Handicap over 1,400 metres and in replay. Let's have a look at the latest win of coming around. As they balanced up, Dicoletto was joined by Debalacio. Why choose her runs on? Coming around is starting to wind up with a head full of steam down the outside as Debalacio reaches the lead. Pike draws the persuader on coming around. Coming around draws alongside of Debalacio. Debalacio coming around. Oh, it's tight. Coming around. Coming, coming around. He's working his way through the grades for his new training team of Grant and Alana Williams. And I think he's likely to improve as he encounters both better rivals and faster races. He's drawn a little bit sticky here in gate number seven. He might find himself three wide, but he overcame a wide gate to win last time out in 66 plus grade. And I think he'll end up being a black type performer in the next 12 months. Goes on top from number two, Speeding Comet, who tries 1400 metres for the first time since he was fourth in what was a fast run WA size produce stakes four seasons ago. So I don't have too many concerns about the seven furlongs. Horse is in good form and Chloe as a party keeps the ride. Number one is My Greek Boy, who's certainly got some place games here second up, was third in the Munger Up stud, uh, stud Sprint last time out on the home track at Albany. And then number eight, Skinning Tins, reunites with Jade McNaught. I think that's quite significant. Also the weight as well, down to 52 and a half kilos. That's a drop of four and a half from its last start performance when beaten three and a half lengths by Patristic. Top selection in race number six is number three, coming around to beat two speeding comets, one My Greek Boy and eight Skinning Tins. Race number seven at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.10. It is the Adrian Chan Memorial Handicap over 1,600 metres and in replay. Let's have a look at the unlucky run last time out of Inspirational Girl. Mine Champ is an inspirational girl at the 250 and San Crispino levelled up and had hit the front got to the lead from Rock and Ruler, Rosebush getting through with Driftstar down the outside San Crispino, Little Rosebush Driftstar, his inspirational girl charging at the rate of knots finishing brilliantly, Driftstar's in front Driftstar, Driftstar filling. Inspirational girl was beaten by the very slow tempo last time out they were about two seconds slower to the 600 metres than a average race and it meant it was very very hard for Inspirational Girl to reel in the winner which was Drift Star. It clearly had the fastest last 200 metres. I think the tempo in this race will be significantly faster with the likes of Patristic engaged. I think from gate number 10 it's going to take a stack of beating. The tongue tie goes on the first time. Inspirational Girl goes on top from number four Go Crying who's likely to get back in this field but I do think there'll be pace on here. Brody Kirby um, takes over from Peter Nucky, weight down to 56 and a half kilos. This horse has got plenty of ability, was all right last start in a harder race. Number three is Paddy Shadow, who's contested stronger races than this in her previous campaigns, but uh, queries certainly persist, certainly from me, about what is this horse's best trip. 
got out to over 2,000 metres last campaign, uh, started up in the Mungrup over 2040 at Albany a couple of weeks ago. And then number one, Patristis has won three races on the spin and does drop in grade from 72 plus to graduation, but that comes with a very hefty weight hike. Goes from 52 kilos up to 57 and a half. I just think might be a little bit vulnerable with that amount of weight, and there'll be a lot of dead weights in the saddle as well with Christy, Christy Bennett riding the horse again. Top selection in race number seven is number seven, Inspirational Girl. To beat four, Go Crying, three, Paddy Shadow, and one, Patristic. Race number eight at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.45. It will be the Harna Dixon Memorial Handicap over 1,200 metres and in replay. Let's go to Belmont Park and the trial of lipstick flickers. Links in front, behind them is Military Might, who's getting to the outside and starting to run on. Inside the 200, lipstick flickers have still got the lead, does it okay? On the outside, coming at it is Clever Keezer, and right down the outside is Military Might, still in front, lipstick flickers, from Clever Keezer, Military Might, Nakoni's boy, but doing it well as Lipstick Flickers and wins from... In terms of ability, I think there's not much to uh, cover a fair few of the runners in this race, but uh, from a map perspective, clearly number 12, Lipstick Flickers, gets the best of the barrier draw. Gate number three here was on speed in the trial, as the ability to be on speed in the race and I think she just gets a much better run in transit than her main rivals here. Goes on top from number eight state attorney who won a fast graduation handicap before missing the top three in what was a slowly run ratings race at Pinjarra. Willing to forgive that run can certainly make his presence felt here. Noseband goes on for the first time. A horse that's had absolutely no luck and his connections must have walked under several ladders this, uh, this preparation is Plutocracy and he's drawn horribly again here. Gate number 11. He got away with being wide last start because they walked in the race one by Chick's pick. He was very strong through the line. I don't know if he's going to get it so soft here. And another horse that's been really cruelled by the barrier draw is number nine, Fairview. Was very good in that race that was won by uh, Chick's pick last start, but has drawn even wider than Plutocracy. Gate number 13, the outside gate. Top selection in race number eight is number 12, Lipstick Flickers, to beat eight State Attorney, four Plutocracy, and nine, Fairview. Race number nine at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 5.25. It's the Nicole Botica Memorial Handicap over 1,100 metres. And in replay, let's have a look at the Lark Hill trial of Catherine Wheel. Ground picture perfect with Suits Me, Redeem Bounty and Zesto. They pack up into the straight now and race inside the 300. Illustrious Tycoon leads narrowly. Catherine Wheel the outside. Up the third was Cryptic Wonders trying to get there through along the inside. Naughty by Nature's hugging the rail but kicking on Illustrious Tycoon. Joining in now is Cryptic Wonder the outside. Cryptic Wonder went up, hits the front. Cryptic Wonder beat second. Illustrious race number nine is very similar to race number eight. I think it's all about about the map and ended up with Catherine Wheel here. Quite like the trial, I think that trial was running a reasonably fast time and I think the format of it's gonna work out quite well. She resumes here with Chris Graham in the saddle, so 52 and a half kilos. Uh, Chris is riding with a great deal of confidence at the moment. He's had quite a number of winners in town. Central gate, and I just think that Catherine Wheel is gonna get the run of the race here from gate number six. Goes on top from number seven, Rosebush, who simply doesn't win out of turn, but has drawn another good barrier. Gate number three after gate number two, last start and one and three and four and four before then. William Pike goes on. I think that's quite significant. Don't know if he can lift her over the line, but she'll certainly be there or thereabouts. 14, Alcina went through the line really strongly in what was a decent class three midweek race last time out behind Lido Beach. Uh, this is a Paul Jordan galloper that doesn't generally race on the speed, but I think Alcina could run into the minus here at a decent price. And then number five, two rise again, goes in the minus pretty much basically because of how he mapped from gate number four for Troy Turner. Top selection in race number nine is number eight, Catherine Wheel to beat seven rows, Bush, 14 Alcina and five to rise again. It's now time to nominate my best bets on the Ascot card and going in a race to race double for William Pike. Race five, number one, Valor Road. And then race number six, number three, coming around. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. You can log onto our website or you can follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time, bye for now.